Hey guys, I just uh, want to say how beautiful that sounded. So good, guys. I love, I love that. And I wanted to ask you, um, getting into obviously get, getting into folk music. What was your gateway introduction? What what things did you really fall in love with? You know, um, since I'm older than you, I, mean, I, I just talk. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm, I, I don't have any problem with that. I, you know, I love. I mean. I got turned on to Tom Rush, Phil Oaks, like people, uh, you know, Tim Buckley, um, when I was very, very young, and even the stuff like James Taylor, and right. all, you know, I just loved all of it. Yeah. And um, so, uh, tell me a bit yeah. about how, how, when you started the band. It's interesting for me, I think, because you know, the people like James Taylor, um, uh, John Denver, and you know, those guys. My mom and my uncle. Um, I would hear that around, and so I actually really didn't care for it. You know, unfortunately, yeah. you attach it to what your parents, you know, you see them as this thing, and you're like 12, and you're listening to like, I don't know, Nirvana or something. But um, um, I think the gateway towards folk for me was Ryan Adams, actually. Yeah. Um, Whiskey Town, and then his solo stuff. Yeah. Um, but honestly, I never really imagined that I would be playing anything folk like at all. Um, when I moved to Seattle and eventually met these these guys, uh, I was listening to and playing very different music. But when I got to Seattle, there was this very like sort of Americana, like all all country rock yeah, stuff like going Fleet on. Yeah, Foxes, things like that. Yeah, and I, it caught me by surprise, yeah. and so I sort of just adapted to it. And when I met Josiah, he and I sort of started writing songs together, and neither one of us were very like we're not like players necessarily. So we would kind of just sing together. So it just sort of lent itself towards that you know, that aesthetic, yeah. Yeah. but it was less like an intentional, I want to make folk music and more of like, we were just good singers and we weren't very good players. So it just kind of happened. That's great. You know, you know, so. And like you said, when you're signing Sub Pop, because Fleet Foxes yeah. made a big splash. It was a change of direction for that record label after their And for the sound city, yeah. you know. Yeah. The city too, things yeah. were, things were changing. No longer the grunge city. Kind yeah. Of was it coffee houses more? Were you guys? Yeah, it's a, it's a yeah, I, I mean, anywhere and everywhere, really. You yeah. know, even if it wasn't a venue. Yeah, we kind of play outside everything. a lot. But yeah. Um, yeah, at the market, garages. we would busk, you know, and yeah. go to parking garages. Parking garages is like the best place ever for me. I was it really? Know. Well, did you guys make creepy. decent money when you were doing it? Were they throwing people around? Yeah. No. No. We just had fun, right? We made enough yeah. to buy a bottle of wine, and that was like <laughs> that was like <laughs> that right. was like that meals was for seven that, days. Yeah. You know, love, at that I, point, I so. love that. So, Charity, how did you how did you meet John? And just um, I had I met so we all kind of <clears throat> came into this open mic in Ballard, Washington, and yeah. Kenny came up from from Los Angeles, and he was the third band member to kind of like meet these guys and, and start forming the band, and then. I came back, I was living overseas, but grew up in Seattle, and kind of was in the same kind of um, time, like point in our lives where it's like we're kind of creating this newness and unfamiliarity, uh, you know, growing into adulthood and stuff. And so Seattle at that point was kind of unfamiliar to me in a way as an adult, you know, just kind of moving back. And anyway, so my friend took I me to so the open mic. Memories that are t -t 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 I know. Of, uh, Charity didn't really drink very much before she met us. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just like remembering like the sort of like shh, catch up to like, you know, like we were like 23, 24. Yeah. Hanging yeah, out with anyways, dudes all the just time. Of, yeah, just I was just imagining IPAs like how different it must have been. And, yeah, yeah. Just, just, trying to, just trying to keep up. But it's true. Anyway, but anyway, but my friend brought me to the open night, Mike, and uh, that night, I think I hopped up on stage that night. I had my fiddle and yeah. was looking to kind of pursue music finally after school and... It was magical, and we started writing music that night on the bench, me and you, I remember. And mm -hmm. Like, Somewhere Over the Rainbow, remember that song? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we didn't write that song, but... <laughs> <laughs> Damn. That's but very <laughs> It's a good song. I wish we could have... I mean, it's amazing. It's really organic. But it's you know, very, very organic. Which I love. Yeah. I think that's great. Ryan Adams, right? Heartbreaker. What a great album. Right. All those records. Yeah. Maddie, yeah. you would... You're a big Hank Williams guy. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, I, I love mean, all the old Matt, stuff. I'm a Guthrie fan. Yeah. Matt, too. Matt and Sharon, you're actually married. Uh, and we, yeah. Yeah, yeah, which I think is very cool. Yeah. Um, he's yeah, he's, he's Hank family, Hank's family, yeah. Hank's great. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're right, Charity. Hank Williams, so he's written so many great love songs beside, you know, the things that people don't realize how about deep he's gone. When he, you know, so, what, so tell me and about Guthrie. your love for him. Oh, uh, I've... I actually, it was more like within the last five years, I just started going down his catalog and just like, it puts you in such a place. That's the yeah. way, the only thing I can describe with it. Uh, uh, it's just 
his music trans transfers you somewhere else into, yeah. into a, a different world, um, which you know all the best artists do that for sure. So he's one of them for me. God three is another one. Yeah. I love all the old stuff. You know. Yeah, it's great. So. You know, I uh, was I was with uh, you know an old family member that was cleaning out a house after someone passed away, and I found these seventy eights of Luke the Drifter, which is. His alter ego, you know, that was when awesome. he was doing it. It were all his records. It was on MGM, but he went out under another name too. Wally was doing the Hank Williams records. We lost him way too young. That's the mm -hmm. sad part about mm -hmm. that. You got a great story too about being in Seattle and being a kid. And I'd love you to tell that story. Okay. I think it's really funny. It's a great one. <laughs> this will be the first time I've told this in a to a microphone. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, but. Uh, yeah, so it has so to do with sound guarding. Matt, Not much Matt, <laughs> yeah. Matt was asking me backstage, um, like what it was like growing up in Seattle. And since John's from Virginia, Charity and I have unique perspectives on that. Uh, and we were there, like we were kids, right, during the whole grunge explosion, you know, in the yeah. early 90s. And so that was just like, you know, you're like doe eyed just watching this whole thing happen. And, and oftentimes you would like see these guys just out and, you know, out and about. Uh, which is a cool, uh, cool thing, cool experience. And one day I was jamming out with my buddies in my parents' basement, playing music like we did, like 12 years old or something. Walk out, uh, we finish playing, we go up to uh, the front of the house on the sidewalk and we're skateboarding and we look over to the neighbor's yard and it's Chris Cornell and Matt Cameron from Soundgarden <laughs> who's, whose music video for Black Hole Sun we just watched 20 times that day. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're like, holy crap. Uh, so, so we run back in and... Um, leave the garage door open, which we never do, because that's impolite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and we play uh, Fell on Black Days from their Super Unknown record as loud yeah. as we can. <laughs> and, uh, and they hear it, of course, and, uh, and uh, he, he comes in uh, maybe 30 seconds later. Chris Cornell walks in and kind of has to duck. He's a tall guy. So <laughs> he kind of ducks into the basement. He's like, and we're all like, Okay, that's what we wanted to have. <laughs> but, uh, and he's like, uh, you guys are playing it a little fast. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty awesome. That is such a great story. Years later, apparently, uh, they, they were reminiscing when the band got back together, and that was one of the moments that they recalled as being like a big moment for them. So it's interesting yeah. to hear, because like, a buddy of mine is now uh, one of their engineers. So yeah. it's just a crazy, you know, big circle. That's a classic story. It's a great city and great music, and... We are so happy to have you here today, guys. We really are. So thanks so much for coming. So if you could do a couple more songs, I'd love yeah. that. All right? Totally. The head and the heart, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>